Welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. I'm excited to be filming another video even though it is on another boat Update it's not a fishing video, but guys i'm going to be getting out there. This is going to help with that I haven't gotten this thing on the water yet This was a boat that was given to our family that had set for a long time And so I did a video a couple videos back where I replaced the floor in it You could barely stand in this boat you without falling through and so it definitely needed it so i just want to go through the five different things i've done so far uh, to make it to where i want to put this thing on the water and see if it leaks if it does i, I want to show you the things i've implemented and done to where i'm not stranded um, or uh, if it's a small enough leak you should be fine so i'm going to give you five things i did to this boat just so that i can go drop it in the water and see how it floats how it how it runs so i suggest get the engine running smooth because that's something that no matter what that's killing two birds with one stone make sure the engine is running smooth and then you can adjust anything while you're in the water if the idle is is kind of bouncing a little bit if it's high if it, whatever it is you can adjust that in the water and so uh, that's kind of why I use a tank like this so that it emulates the water. And that's actually had a huge effect because I've used muffs before and thought I had a beautiful idle on several different motors. Then you put it in water um, and it's just, it's different. The suction's different. How much, what uh, the accumulation of water that's coming in is different and so that's why i use a tank like that this motor was running but it would idle real crazy and it would kind of shake back and forth a little bit and then it would just die at first i always think carbs and of course this one's got two carbs you know before i take those apart you know i wanted to do something and so i always go to the gas there is a thing we call pissers right here now that is where the water gets sucked in from down here comes up here cools the engine and then comes out here so there was nothing coming out of the pisser over here when we tried to start it and it wouldn't start and that could be pretty bad so watch out for that number one thing so guys if your engine does start and you're not seeing any water come out through there um, stop your engine as soon as possible you don't want it to overheat and that causes a lot more problems so what we did was we went ahead and i just repaired that hose there the little flap for your choke uh, you want those to be lined up you don't want one to be all the way open and one closed a little bit and so the way that you can tell whether your butterfly choke flaps are opening at the same exact time and the same exact amount is you can come over here to the other side i don't know if you guys can see that down there you see that when i when i when i spin this and i want to get that vertical like that just as straight up and down as possible i want to look down at the other one and the other one's back in there you can't quite see it when i had this one completely vertical straight up and down the one down below was just a little bit off. And so what I did was a pretty simple fix is that you loosen this top one here. You loosen that and then there's a spring on here. You just pull down on this and it will just flop back in the place where it's supposed to be. And then you push against this and you tighten that screw. And now both of them line up exactly the same. Also, these two cables right here, when I get into the, uh, the lake, if I need to adjust these at all, I will. And so I'm kind of waiting to do that. Now what you have here, and this is on, on a lot of these older boats and, and newer ones, this is a solenoid. This is actually a kind of like a manual switch to turn you know the choke on or off and you want it to always be going this way and what happens is when you turn the key 
when you turn the key a little bit in the ignition and then push in, this automatically opens the choke for you back here. So you don't have to open this up, but this is a manual one. Uh, you wanna make sure it stays right there. And guys, that's, that is the extent of what I've done with this motor. And so let's go ahead and see if it cold starts up. Turn it and then push it in, open up that choke. Got a little smoke. Yeah, water's coming out fine. Guys, I love that idle, especially, especially on a motor this age. Um, a low idle is something that is one of the hardest things to get. Um, you know when you're always throwing gas down it it's hard for it to to reject that but this is awesome guys try to give it a little bit or actually I love how it returns back to that idle, guys. And so, let me shut that off. All right, so that was a cold start. To me, it sounds like that's running pretty good. So if I needed to do anything with the carbs, I definitely would take them apart, clean them. I might still even do that. Um, I did take the spark plugs off. They didn't look that bad, so I actually, I cleaned them up as well. Um, and also the connector, connectors that go along with them. But it's, it fires right up. And so I feel, I feel good about that. Gas, yes, I know I need a new gas tank, guys, for sure. Uh, somebody wanna send me one or let me know, I'll come pick it up. Um, but I, I kinda cheaped out and I was trying to fix this hose piece by piece, you know, by like, you know, cutting off there cutting off there but i realized that the old hose that was on here was so brittle it was terrible um it was actually falling apart inside which you know made these um unusable you know that that ball gets something in there and all of a sudden it's leaking gas and it's just not as strong and plus these are fairly cheap guys so what i did is just this is something that i would do is concentrate on the gas because most likely change the gas out I mean, even clean this out, let it dry, uh, put, put the right mix in, marine grade mix. And then I would, I would uh, if you have any, you know, unless this is in really good condition, then I would get it, you know, right now it's real tight. The bulb is real tight. So, you know, I don't got any leaks anywhere, except this uh, tank's probably got lots of vents everywhere. If you're gonna take a boat out and test it out like this, you knowing nothing about it, I would personally want to test your bilge pump. The bilge pump is going to shoot out any water here that it's taking on. Now, if it has a float in it, it'll do it automatically. If you have a like, like me, I can uh, I think it's this one. I can turn it on manually, and it'll shoot out here. And we're gonna test that right now. So we're testing the automatic float on the build pump, guys. Kind of filling up this back here. And look at this. That's awesome. Looks like it's pumping it all out. And of course, that's just on the automatic setting. I didn't have to flip any buttons. So this is um, a hot, positive 
uh, directly onto the battery that when that that float um, gets raised it will automatically turn on and spit out the water here so I think it's ready to be lake tested batteries are important always make sure before you guys go out that they've been you know sitting on the trickle charger or however you charge them um, I actually have a second battery that I'm gonna connect to this one making it you know, still a 12 volt uh, battery but with twice as many amps but uh, I'm gonna that one's on the trickle charge right now just in case So electrically, this thing was a nightmare when I got it, guys. Um, there's burned wires up and down the sides of this. That's why not everything is wired. This is kind of a new panel here. I got lights, bilge pump, and that that's actually uh, the pump for the live well. Uh, let's flip this switch here. I think that's lights. So. can't really tell but they're working you guys don't know the, the the electrical nightmare I've had working with this boat but definitely working just in case you get stuck out there um, something goes wrong nice to have nice to let people know you're out there wherever you go and of course the other thing is paddles so you have a way of at least getting somewhere. I would suggest testing a boat like this in a lake that's, you know, like it's close to my house and don't go too far from the boat ramp. There's plenty that you can do uh, out kind of in the middle and come right back. If something happens, you're not two miles away. You got one of the most expensive life jackets on the market. It's even got some, some dried mud or something, yeah. And so, yeah, fire extinguisher. I've got a horn that I gotta put back on. It's old style. But I was like, real quick, I just wanted to kind of explain to you that that's the next step is I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna see how it runs. All right, guys, well, I apologize if that was a little longer than you anticipated. I said it would be short, but of course, I'm never short. Um, if you have any questions about anything I did um, or any critiques or advice, um, I'm always open to it. I appreciate you guys watching. And because uh, I have no friends. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's kind of true, but no. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope to be posting more fishing videos, a lot more fishing videos coming up here real quick because um, the bite's on. We had a couple of bites the other night, but we, you know, somebody I was with caught a pretty good size one. And so uh, we're excited to get out there, get some videos going. Um, get to some new spots, you know, uh, a lot of places around here in Kansas City have been kind of 435 Dam, Lawrence, Bowersock. I'm not saying I'm not going to go back to those places, but uh, trying to find some new places. And so uh, it'll be fun. So I appreciate you guys.